Hello, everyone, and welcome to another special episode of You Missed It. I am your host, Jack, and once again, I have Ryland, Zach, Andrew, and Alex as, I don't know, uh, <laughs> I guess uh, guests, uh, victims, or fellow watchers. Not sure what to call you guys anymore. Anyways, if you guys want to hear us uh, talk about other movies out there, other, other underrated movies, you can find us on SoundCloud at You Missed It Podcast, on uh, iTunes at You Missed It, on Twitter, why am I underscore podcast, and you can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Please like and share and follow us, you know? Don't you like hearing us rambling? You do. You know you do. Anyways, uh, so was my pick today. And today I picked the 1965 slapstick comedy epic musical romance, just a shit ton of uh, everything. Genre. Everything. This yeah. was everything. The movie, um, the Great Race, released by. Oh, that's w- what it's called. Yeah, it's called the Great Race. <laughs> okay. You actually finally figured out yeah, what it was called. No, <laughs> dude, I, I didn't know what the name of the movie was. It said so on the. If you watched the movie, instead no, but of I making... missed that card, so it never brought it up ever again. So <laughs> that's true. They like, didn't really. Huh. They didn't really name drop it. No. no. <laughs> yeah, it's not one of those like you know. It was like Professor Fate. It should have been aha aha. That yeah. should have been the title of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> or Max. No, you're yeah. doing it too low. Yeah. You're doing it like Professor Fate. You're not yeah. doing it like the other guy. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. The, <laughs> We'll get to that. Anyways, um, so yeah, no, this is The the Great Race, released by Rona Brothers in 1965. It was directed by Blake Edwards and written by Arthur Ross, and the film stars Jack Lemmon, Tony Curtis, Natalie Wood, and Peter Falk. Uh, based loosely off of the 1908 New York to Paris race, two competing daredevils, the great Leslie, played by Tony Curtis, and the evil Professor Fate, played by Jack Lemmon, race around the world... Uh, I can't read my own writing anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, Race on World in their state-of-the-art gadget-filled automobiles. Also on the track is the determined suffragette journalist uh, Maggie Dubois, played by Natalie Wood. Um, made on a budget of $12 million, which at the time made it the highest, most expensive comedy film made at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, if... I think in, with inflation, that would have been like $80 million. Yeah, so, probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the film went on to gross over $25 million. However, when it was released, many considered it to be a critical flop. Mm. Um, many critics uh, claimed that this film was Blake Edwards' first failure after uh, previous films such as Breakfast at Tiffany's, The Pink Panther, and A Shot in the Dark. Uh, today, the film has a 74% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and a 7.3 rating on IMDb. Um, the film was nominated for five Oscars, uh, including Best Cinematography, Best Sound Mixing, Best Editing, Best Original Song, the one with the uh, sing-along. Oh, yeah. Um, and it won for Best Sound Editing. Oh, cool. Um, the film is also uh, well-known for being a big inspiration for the Hanna-Barbera cartoon Wacky Races. Um, and it also has a bunch of callbacks and actually lifts some sound effects directly out of old Looney Tune cartoons. Mm-hmm. Actually, the sound editor was the sound editor for uh, the, all the Looney Tune cartoons. Oh, cool. Um, mm-hmm. This was a Warner Brothers movie, so it makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's just my little brief intro for the movie. Um, yeah, this is um, my third time seeing this movie. And, yeah, I discovered it uh, a couple years ago while I was going through just a bunch of these old uh, epic comedies i was introduced to it's a mad 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 world prior to this movie and then just you know going through all these big epic comedies that seem to be released around the mid 60s or something mm-hmm. like that this kind of popped up and i just watched it one day and i just i really dug it i thought it was just a good old silly epic um slapstick comedy that honestly because of jack lemon and peter falk and all that it it's a lot of fun it's one of those movies you can kind of watch with your family You know, just get a big gathering around and just watch Just You don't really have to pay attention too much because it's not about the plot. It's just about seeing Pratt Falls, being impressed with the the physical comedy. The jokes are, uh, for the most part, hit. And, uh, yeah, and and Jack Lemmon, to me, is just... He's the reason to see this movie. He is a (laughs) riot playing two characters at at, at certain times, too. And uh, Peter Falk is also great. And and Tony Curtis and Natalie would also do a good job as well. So... Yeah, no, overall, like, uh, this being the third time I've seen it, uh, I still think it's a pretty solid movie. Um, I was the only one to have seen this prior to today, so I'm very curious to see what everyone else thinks. I will start to my left with Rylan Dutel. 
All right. Um, so yeah, this is, this is my first time uh, seeing this film. I'd seen a couple uh, a couple of clips before, namely the uh, the uh, pie fight at the end, but which is it is about as out of context as it sounds. So I really don't need to elaborate. Uh, but it's funny that you mentioned that. I mean, it's it's cool. This is a Warner Bros. movie, and it's funny that you mentioned the uh, parallels to Looney Tunes as well, because the whole thing really does just feel like one giant cartoon. It's obviously it's live action, but in terms of the scope, the colors, the exaggerated characters, the the slapstick and the extreme situations that you find these characters in, it's definitely it, it's definitely a very cartoon and has some of the uh, the scope and scale of a uh, of an animated film going on. Uh, in that in that sense, it does kind of have some of the. Uh, not not necessarily drawbacks, I would say, because it's not it's not really that type of movie. Like it doesn't it's lacking the uh, any like character nuance or any real sense of suspense or stakes because everybody's made of rubber in this in this movie <laughs> and invincible to everything. So I mean, it, but like it so it doesn't have those elements. But that's not obviously that's not what this type of movie is supposed to be about. It's mm-hmm. just something that that. You, you you just want to sit back and watch what happens, not because you particularly feel any personal, maybe not like personal investment or real, uh, any real sense of like suspense or anything, but you just, you just want to see what happens next because you know it's going to be good. And yeah, this movie delivers like a million laughs. And like you said, Jack Lemmon and, uh, and Peter Falk were just, just hysterical. A box on you. <laughs> Yeah. This, yeah. this is definitely something uh, all ages uh, can get something out of, and and a good uh, good group movie as well. I think mm-hmm. definitely, yeah. I think I would have gotten more uh, got more out of it watching with you guys than I would have like just just by myself. Probably would have kind of maybe just maybe drifted off, but it's definitely something to sit down with family or friends mm-hmm. and have a good laugh together. Yeah, the first two times I watched the movie was by myself and uh the first time I was just I was sick and I had like nothing to do and I just remembered I, I had had it on my computer and I was like, I'll just watch it and mm. it, it improved my day like cuz I was feeling like crap and then yeah. just was like just it's one of those ones that you just you're just chuckling have a grin on your face throughout the whole movie because it just doesn't stop. Mm-hmm. In terms of like even when it like it the it gets a little slower or gets a little bit more serious, they mm-hmm. still throw one outrageous hilarious joke like for example um there's a there's a sword fighting scene and the one guy is like he's going to make a dashing escape and then he just throws <laughs> falls right through his boat <laughs> it's like that that's stuff is like that's yeah, just, really just the setup and kind of the the, the anti payoff yeah it, uh, it's good and yeah and you see the like the, this movie is filled with like stock like character cutouts and cliches like you have the you have the the dashing charming hero who wears who wears all white and has no real flaws and like perfect teeth with with cgi glints and stuff and then you have the scheming finger steepling uh villain with the mustache twirling villain with the top hat and the and the all black and 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 just the all of the stock cliches <sighs> like that but at the same time you this just so much happens mm-hmm. along the story that you don't you it even despite all of its uh all of its cliches you still don't really know what to expect yeah, I definitely consider like this movie to be like kind of like the last gasp or like last like kick in the can uh, from the old school Hollywood system because like two three years later that's when like the new Hollywood started yeah. to come in you know with Easy Rider and um, uh, oh shit what was that bank robbery movie again oh. um, with um, Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway oh um, Bonnie and Clyde yeah thank you yeah. Um, I knew the actors' names without the movie. Um, yeah like those came around in midnight cowboy yeah because this like made in technicolor it's definitely it screams old fashioned like i think what helps keep it from being really outdated is that um by the 60s they could do these big epic special effects uh uh, more convincingly Mm -hmm. um and like you can see in the movie like some of the stuff you see you're like damn they wouldn't do that today or like they would cgi all of this shit (laughs) um so it kind of makes it that much more impressive when you see like certain pratfalls of like like planes like flying through buildings and all that shit like it's really cool um anyway zach uh you hadn't seen this movie either you went into this cold cold as cold as ice how do you feel how do you feel now i feel a little warm I feel a little great. Ooh. Um, no, I, I think it's I think it's really good, and it, it's it's kind of neat because I felt that there's like a lot that's very classic about it, like you said, and what Rylan was saying. That there's a lot of like 
you know, I guess stereotypical things and tropes that you see in other movies, like with the villains and things. But I thought there was a lot that was like kind of ahead of its time too. Like, um, just a few different things, just the way that they did jokes and things like that. I just thought it was, I guess, really smart. Like it played against your expectations, which is kind of cool to see a movie that old do stuff like the guy falling on the boat and things like that. And just, just different jokes. I thought were just really well done. Different gags are played out really well. And, um, just different characters and stuff like, uh, like the, the leading lady, I guess, Natalie Woods, the actress name. Yeah. Um, you know, just like the whole like women's rights thing and mm-hmm. that being pushed throughout the movie and stuff too. Although not like super seriously or anything like that, it's still within the movie and it's confined uh, constraints. Mm-hmm. And it's things. definitely used more as a, more as a character based joke. Yeah. Than yeah. Anything. Th- than anything. Yeah. But it was mm-hmm. still, it was still kind of, but neat, it's though. kind of, but kind of rightfully so in the sense of this character because right. she's just incredibly fucking annoying well yeah <laughs> well exactly well that's the whole point like everyone every character is like an extreme version of like who they're supposed to be, like you know the over top villain the dashing hero yeah. the exactly. extremely outspoken like uh woman in like in the during the suffer gate air and all mm-hmm. that and then like the, the bimbling idiot partner and all that and yeah then, like the complete drunk like prince and all that so yeah it's 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 it's, it's a huge satire so it's like, taking anything too seriously you kind of this you're is missing not, the point it's not the, yeah. this is not the yeah. movie to well do well that. exactly yeah and i mean yeah i just i just thought like in terms of this movie i thought there were some really big laughs like there's consistent laughs throughout the movie and again it, it kind of keeps it going and going and going for as long as the movie is this movie by the way is like two hours and 40 minutes mm-hmm. i mean that includes an intermission but the intermission wasn't as long as i expected mm-hmm. i was you know like i was telling alex i was just gonna take a poop on my butt yeah, but you know, I'm, and that takes some time. I'm glad that you felt our listening audience needed to be needed to be aware of. I think I thought you should have been aware. You know, yeah, um, so just just getting in the into the mindset. Yeah, here, but but before, that way they can at least you know imagine what it's like to actually sit through a movie with us. Right, they'll know this is probably when Zach will have to take a shit. Yeah, you know, <laughs> well, or just poop on the butt. Jack. Yeah, not, poop just, on your not butt, just taking yeah. a shit. That's true. Specific. Um, I'm going to extract that sound clip of you saying that, and whenever you text me, <laughs> that's going to be the sound that comes up. <laughs> Poop on my butt. <laughs> Mark it. Yeah. This is when I should have brought my fart machine. Damn yeah. it. Ha- oh yeah. I'm God surprised did. you missed an opportunity. <laughs> All yeah. Yeah. It's a one-time thing. You're getting, oh well. You're losing your step, man. Oh well. Too many, oh well. Too many Andrew puns. There you go. Yeah, I've been too prioritized with, uh, with Andrew. Yeah. Making hit jokes, <laughs> hit puns with Andrew. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but it, but in terms of the movie, it's just yeah, it's one of those like, and I'm kind of a sucker for it too of movies that are just like, you know, like silly. a big race or just well, I was silly, but I wasn't going there. I was talking more just the structure of just like, oh, they're going, it's this race, it's a road movie. Mm-hmm. I rat guess race. I should say, yeah. yeah, like I like Rat Race a lot, and uh, you know, even like serious ones like Wages of Fear. I was thinking of that oh, the yeah. whole time. That's like the serious version of this, yeah. almost. Um, a great movie too, but this is great in a different way. It's you know just very funny and consistently funny. And at the beginning, I wasn't sure because I was just like, oh, it's gonna be like these silly gags, and mm-hmm. this is the movie, right? And it it was to a degree, but I th- thought it got better. Like I thought you got more into the characters, yeah, as it went on and what was going on, and mm-hmm. it just kind of you know one big laugh after another, and you really kind of got into it pretty quickly. Yeah, once the race starts, that's kind of like when things start start to like settle down in terms of like we have a focus now. Like yeah. there's a plot. Like, yeah, okay, now bit. the rest of the movie is, like, just game from A yeah, to B. Yeah, the first little yeah. bit is just setting up, really, the dynamic between, or the rivalry between yeah. Wesley and Fate. Introducing all the main characters, you know, what they do, and so that when they the race starts, you already know exactly what could happen. Yeah. Professor Fate's going to do everything he can to sabotage uh, the great Leslie, and, you know, Leslie's going to always succeed. And mm. and, you know, and from what mm. and from what you've seen as the audiences, you kind of already have a pretty good idea that that's pretty much what the outcome's gonna be but you'd have no idea how it's gonna play out yeah and that and i think that draws into like what you were saying earlier about the suspense a little bit you're like because you're wondering like oh probably leslie's gonna win but Mm. you don't know and you know i won't spoil too much of the movie but uh yeah no it it, it does play as you were saying zach Mm -hmm. against your expectations with the certain jokes and certain uh i guess twists and turns you didn't really expect yeah yeah i like it when they actually have to work together um yeah like on the iceberg and then uh the even, blanket <laughs> yeah, the blanket and the polar bear and uh and then them escaping uh the castle and all yeah. that like all that stuff is interesting like seeing like these different personalities like at times like being apart and then clashing them together and seeing how they work off each other like we were commenting mm-hmm. how the peter falk character was a lot 
more efficient when he was with Leslie than he yeah. was with Professor Fade. And we're like, oh, now he's all of a sudden doing this. It's like, well, it's because he's yeah, it makes he, sense. He's a follower. Yeah. You know, he, he he whoever is a good leader, and he'll follow suit. Yeah, so. he's just he's just used to following someone who's fucking stupid. Yeah, exactly. So therefore, he's really stupid, right? Mm-hmm. But you change that up, and you know, he becomes a little more smarter, a little more uh easier to get around and can do yeah. things a little more more competent yeah um but uh, yeah i mean the the only negative i would say and it's an obvious one is uh it's a fucking long movie <laughs> but yeah. uh but I, I that's hardly a takeaway because honestly most movies that length don't make up all, all its time it's very rare you get a movie that's like you know almost three hours that's like oh it earned every minute like yeah it's rare right so yeah well i mean it's i'm sure it yeah. could have been like trimmed at parts but i feel it still moved pretty quickly it for did how long it, it, it is impressive how much still. how much yeah. happened in it like i wasn't bored I'm like oh god we still have like 40 minutes left to yeah go in this. it wasn't like, that it wasn't that slow there were just kind of like moments where it's like okay like a little yeah. bit but and not I, nothing big yeah. bumps that, in the road if you will yeah <laughs> yeah and I, I think a lot of that has to do with like of the time you know like sure slower yeah. slower editing longer longer takes and all that yeah probably and, and yeah. also just because of how big the movie is these epic movies mm. tend to be longer um especially with like an animation and all that like that's why they had oh, intermissions yeah. back in the day because movies like used to be almost like three hours like for typically a time. longer yeah yeah the big epics they always would put an intermission and it was just like you know going to a theater it was mm. part of the custom and then by the 70s intermissions were like gone yeah um unless like, you watch monty python holy crap yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and That's the best intermission in movie history yeah. is in Mighty Python. Yeah, yeah. I dare someone to fight me on that. Yeah. Don't at me. Anyways, uh, I don't know if people say that. Actually, no, at me. We need the publicity. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't, at, don't, at, at, don't at me, like me personally at our show though at his address no yeah the mailbox get the mailbox going i'm regretting everything yeah. now um You're anyways so close to getting away i know <laughs> one episode where you don't mention my house <laughs> <laughs> anyways andrew uh what did you think of this old old movie yeah it's super old um <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I mean, uh, I, I, yeah, uh, I thought I wasn't going to be able to handle it. I wasn't far off, like the Prestige, a uh, campy version of the Prestige. No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't that's, that's that far actually off. No, no. Pretty uncanny. Once you said that, I'm like, damn, that's actually dead on. <laughs> yeah, like I just got that vibe right away. I'm like, that's oh, they're not, competing, that's but not it's a like super setup. campy. Yeah, we also and, and we they're had like clo- uh, had daredevils clo- instead of magicians, and yeah. I was like, oh, this is kind of like the Prestige. <laughs> and we did have clones. We had doppelgangers too. That's right. So. You did. Yeah. Well, yeah. For some reason, in that scene, I got this like man in the iron mask moment where I was like, uh, it was that Leo movie. Was it Leo? Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Leo. That's yeah. right. I never saw that. Oh, you never did? No. Oh, they like literally swap. It's it's what happened there, pretty much, but serious. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a, a lot the, more serious. Isn't it, like, isn't it just like a take on the, like the prince and the pauper or something like that? No, it's, I I don't know what that is, but that is where like they have like a poor like peasant no, no, and no, the no. king and they switch. They're like well, that uh, one is, but they're like brothers or something. Set twin brothers. Yeah, 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 one's oh. royal by, uh, and one gets hidden Duma away. And yeah, and I can't remember if it's a sequel to Three Musketeers or or like a spiritual yeah, it's sequel supposed to be like a spiritual to Three Musketeers or not. Sensor, but I think like, it's related. It's somehow yeah. related. I forgot. I, I just saw the movie on TV, man. Although I really, I wasn't like like way into it but it's a prequel to iron man is what it is yeah there you go yeah. <laughs> it's, it's medieval yeah. iron man <laughs> yeah 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 but i i, I... post french revolution iron man <laughs> <laughs> that i'd pay tickets for right there that's right predates the end. it's the first mcu movie to be honest so yeah. uh no no i um yeah it was it was kind of in that way kind of where it went where i thought it would go i was like oh this is gonna be real ca-. at first i started to like pick things out that i'm like oh this is weird or but then i just fell into what they were doing like Mm -hmm. the the world that they were building the rules that they were setting up and that there aren't really any rules that you could kind of just do whatever's funny Mm -hmm. and it it worked consistently like uh has already been said it's the pacing was fine it was good like i went through the entire movie without ever feeling bored Mm -hmm. or that it was dragging which is good good for me like if it went the two two hours 40 and i didn't really notice that it was two hours 40 maybe i noticed that it, it was long mm-hmm. but not that it, i didn't feel its runtime so to me that's a success mm-hmm. uh and it made me laugh throughout the whole thing so i mean the gags were the physical comedy was really good and you don't see that as much anymore no it's mostly uh it's mostly in the writing now people try to make you laugh with with the jokes that they write which 
you know, if you're going to do that for a whole movie, it has to be like a South Park style thing where you're just constantly trying jokes yeah. because, you know, not it's a bunch aren't going to hit and then one's going to hit. And it's good. that's how you keep people laughing. But uh, nowadays it's like they think that every joke is so funny and that's yeah. why comedies drag. But mm-hmm. physical comedy is usually like pretty consistently funny, especially if you uh, like if you mix it in w- uh, with um with your writing, with the jokes that you're writing, mm-hmm. it usually pays off because if one thing's not funny, then the other's funny, right? Yeah. So yeah. even in this movie, for instance, like maybe not all the jokes were that funny. Sometimes they make a joke and it wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be laughing as much. Mm-hmm. But then they'd follow it up with this like funny, you know, this like uh, this funny bit of physical comedy where like mm-hmm. somebody would fall a certain way or it'd be something unexpected that made me laugh, right? So they constantly had me wondering where it was going to go. Yeah. So and just like like going off what you were saying, just like the little tiny like little comedy moments, mm-hmm. like just adding in the right sound effect or yeah. just the right look, like that's to me like a dying art. Yes. In in comedy uh, films nowadays, it's it's too much on like just getting somebody who's good at improving, put them in front of a camera and just go. Yeah. Yeah. You know that's sort of like and taking you know, the best take. Or whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. sort of like you know the the like the <gasps> frat pack type of way of making movies like will Ferrell oh for sure yeah and uh owen wilson you well know, paul to, rod the rogan, the, the, yeah. rogan so if you yeah. have the right people that does work oh right? it works like will ferrell's movies do work because of that, yeah I think. Because, but, like, oh, but that's yeah. one type it's of funny. movie i mean yeah. and i feel like, yeah. and I feel like with that method it'd be harder to create timeless humor as well it's gonna come yeah i don't know elf is a timeless classic so mm-hmm. yeah but the, like saying. we like that we can name we can name certain ones but then like will ferrell is the one who has succeeded for the most part but then there are just yeah there's guys so many that are just crap and unfortunately, like, you know, it, it's like most like co- like we talk about like movies like nowadays that aren't doing like, say, gangbusters at the box office or ones that are like now kind of coming back. And I feel like, you know, we, we've discussed that horror films have been on the rise, yeah. like, especially in the U.S. And they're like being like good box office, you know, successes, uh, you know, get out. They're more creative, more creative, not, you know, the same shit we've seen all the time. Yeah. I feel like comedy um, could have a potential to to take over that mantle as well. I right. feel like lately um, it's starting uh, to come up this yeah, year. Yeah. Because I was going to say, yeah. like, what I've noticed lately with comedy is that uh, uh, they've been they've been kind of figuring out what you need. Uh, like so the missing element to me has been the characters have never been that uh, relatable or fun like mm-hmm. they're it's all about the jokes it's all about the yeah. jokes and they fall flat because you don't care about who's delivering them yeah but mm-hmm. now they've really been nailing it with the casts and and even the unknowns that they're casting mm-hmm. or the lesser known people that they're casting like uh, they're creating these great uh, group dynamics mm-hmm. so like an example i can think of is like girls trip recently i saw that that group meshes together so well and you just love uh the whole the movie works because of them right and then i just saw blockers and that worked because the the kids were actually really funny mm-hmm. um but typically you know whoever you put as the high school kids they're never funny so i think that they're really f- that's what's changing now lately Mm -hmm. like especially in the last year at least Mm -hmm. yeah and definitely like the one thing that um i've watched a few videos of like discussing how like we talk about like you know the uh, dialogue jokes and also there's physical comedy but also visual comedy Mm -hmm. using the camera uh to create jokes through editing through composition through framing or anything like that that i feel like also um uh, has taken a big dip also in the last few years as well yeah whereas you look at this movie um there's so many like great like tableau looking shots or just yeah. like you, you hold it on to this like angle like i love this stuff like the big pie fight and how leslie doesn't get hit for like yeah, it's pretty the great. whole yeah. time and you, he just stands there as there's just all this stuff happening not a word is spoken but it's hilarious yeah and even when he does yeah. get hit it's a white cream pie he doesn't yeah get it. yeah he's got no fuchsia purple or yellow stains <clears throat> yeah on. yeah no they can only afford one sweater um, oh yeah <laughs> they, they put too no. much money into pies <laughs> no like he's got an entire freaking wardrobe like he's got as many outfit changes as That's natalie true. wood does except yeah. they're just all yeah. white i heard that the director because they went over budget constantly throughout this movie sure. and a way to ke- keep getting money the director just brought natalie wood with them with her ha! so ha! that to the executives to say can you give us more money because they won't say no to her Right. Uh, so <laughs> i was like that's kind of funny but yeah it just ballooned to like this huge like budgeted uh, comedy because um, I think like even the highest grossing movie at the time like in the 60s was like oh god 
by that um, time by that time it was like i think like ben hur or something like that. i was that. gonna say yeah that makes was, sense. or no sorry no no it was cleopatra oh yeah okay. yeah and that was like 40 million dollars yeah so just <clears throat> give you an idea of like just the time like inflation that's a bitch um anyways uh alex uh i am what did you think of this movie how did you like uh uh how, how do you think uh what do you think <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i'm getting old like half hour into this movie i was thinking i gotta lie down because it's it was really loud it was really energetic there was a lot going on mm. and i was like guys 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 can we just stop for a minute <laughs> <laughs> But it is, it's a great film to watch with people, and, yeah. and I wouldn't have seen it any other way. I mean, mm-hmm. the four of you, this is how I wanted to see this film. Mm-hmm. I, I knew next to nothing about it. I saw it on Blake Edwards' IMDb page, mm-hmm. and that was probably about it. Didn't have any interest in anything before Skin Deep at the time. Right. Yeah, that great condom scene from Skin Deep. That's oh, all boy. I'm going to say about <laughs> this. <laughs> but this film, oh... I did feel the two hours and 40 minutes. Yeah. I think mm. I think some of the scenes, the sword fighting scene, for example, I think yeah. it, it dragged on too long. However, yeah. I understand that you can't be too high energy all the time because you're going to wear the audience down too mm-hmm. quickly, the yeah. viewer. So uh, the intermission makes sense. It, it's The movie is a big, grand epic. You can hear it in the beginning with the music, and mm. you just know you're in for something big huge yeah and especially with a title like the great race i would love to have seen a trailer for this film just to get an idea of how exciting it was back then because the last film we did which was hitchcock when when it's near the end of the film and and the, the you see the audience in the theater and Hitchcock's outside the theater and he hears them reacting mm-hmm. to the shower scene and he's he's dancing around it. it's like a symphony for him mm-hmm. so yeah. imagine putting yourself in the theater for the great race at that particular time it would be it'd be so much fun i think yeah, yeah. because things were i want to say things were simpler back then in terms mm-hmm. of comedy and, and in terms of entertainment mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. so something like this i can identify with it the humor is a bit dated, some of it. Not as dated as the Philadelphia story. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's that's fair. Well, yeah. we are talking, they're 25 years apart. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think that's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So things change over time. And, oh man, I'm, this is a film that I'm glad I didn't bring my SJW goggles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that feminist stuff, man? Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I was yeah. thinking that at first, but then, like, <laughs> I, I, at first I was looking at it, I was like, what the fuck? are they doing <laughs> like, yeah. what it is this is like the uh, feminist stereotype and then i was like oh wait this is all ridiculous like, yeah totally yeah. Ridiculous. everything's over the top yeah. it's like, over the top it's like oh this is okay i can i forget about it i did that forget did. about all rules or all seriousness i don't give a yeah. shit yeah no that did go yeah. through my head when i was picking this movie i was like i'm wondering how this is gonna fly <laughs> like for the first maybe like 30 minutes i was like Especially with that her uh, character, like the, yeah, at the when like, she her introduction, yeah, and the way she kept like like harping on it, and I was like, man, what are they? Are they like they're clearly making fun of it, but why? You know, it just seems kind of uh, um, dismissive, right? And then I and then I realized, no, 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 they're just kind of uh, the whole world is like silly that way in mm-hmm. the same way so i can let it go yeah no like they weren't like taking a stand they were just sort of no, just having no. just again it was yeah. just making well, it, 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 this whole world is cartoons they, yeah, yeah. Everybody's yeah. Cartoon. it didn't yeah. seem well okay so here's the thing it didn't seem like a cartoon where they were trying to make fun of some make fun of something that was serious like it, it like in a way sorry they were making fun of something that's serious but they weren't doing it in a insulting uh, way. Yeah, yeah. I'm ch- it like, wasn't tr- degrading. Or yeah, like yeah. That. It's not like a like an offensive cartoon from like the yeah. Walt Disney era or yeah. something where it's like this is just wrong. Poor you know? taste. Yeah. Uh, or in poor taste, it's like it didn't have that 
air to it. Yeah. To it was, it, there was nothing that really made me like feel uncomfortable. Like, ooh. Yeah. Like, no. like, like in Philadelphia story, there were some lines that the uh, crazy uncle would say, you just like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That don't fly today. It would, no. You would be on a list or two today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two. The great list. <laughs> <laughs> the great spacey the list. The list oh, is life. Oh, I was, I was gonna, I was, you know, I was gonna mention Schindler's List, but I just backed off. But man, you just, just I, went in yeah, there. I, I thought that was off limits. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, just went on hey, that hey, list. Hey, I just said a line. I didn't say anything else about it, man. Come you, on. Everybody knows that Schindler's List, Jack. No, you don't know that. <laughs> I think, I think most everybody. people now do. people do. now people do. <laughs> Spoiled it, Zach. Like Come the on. two people who haven't seen it, yeah. they're like under five. <laughs> Anyways, continue. <laughs> you need a break? No. Well, maybe. You need, intermission? you need an intermission? Like I said, I'm getting old. I gotta lie down. I want to know what Jack Lemon did before every take. Because <laughs> <laughs> for Dumb and Dumber Two, uh, whenever um, Jeff Daniels, he w- whenever Jeff Daniels would do a take, right before he would be like, he would shake his head, and then all of a sudden he'd be in that spaced out look that Harry has, mm-hmm. and then go. So I wonder what Jack Lemon did. Was he snorting coke? Was he was he getting Blake Edwards to slap him around or what? Because he was yelling a lot. And Peter Falk as well. So I think when you see Peter Falk in Columbo and he's like, hey, yeah. hey, 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 hey you understand. Because mm-hmm. he was just wore down after this. Or, at, or, or when he's reading uh, his story, um, Princess Bride, to you know, Fred oh. Savage and all that. He's his just voice like, is just so worn out. Yeah, like, you know, for ideas. I've seen some shit. <laughs> I was in a race once. <laughs> there, there were two lines that Jack Lemon said that I really want to have for myself. One of them is, you rise, you shine. Yes. <laughs> I want to make that my alarm tone when I wake up in the morning, just over and over and over again. The other one was when they were on the iceberg, he said this line to Peter Falk, and I want to bring this back. It's, it's a good insult. Thimble-headed gherkin. <laughs> no idea what it means, but I think it should make a comeback. Oh, uh, and, and Texas Jack. His, oh, yeah. his first line, Fiddly D. <laughs> Brilliant. It's great. Love it. That, and just, oh, and I'm just, just shooting all the guns in the air, too, constantly. Yeah. That scene that is love. great. Yeah. I also just loved like when they're fighting and uh, the main character, he's the way he's fighting people eventually, he's not punching people. He's just like diving at yeah. them. And he keeps doing it. Like that subtle comedy like that that I really yeah. liked. Yeah. And it or was, even when he get punched, he would dive into a table. Like I remember like he dived to yeah. one table, stand up, get punched again, dives into the table next. Yeah. And yeah. that was that was the other thing too. Yeah, people would get hit and it wouldn't look as hard, but then they, they would fall tables. terribly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like everybody was diving into tables until there were none left. Yeah. yeah. Or like the random stuff, like they like they're running away from like Native Americans and also like oh, yeah. no, they were just a welcoming party dressed yeah. up just to the oh okay, <laughs> just moving yeah, on. just unexpected stuff. Like yeah. that was the thing. The timing was just really good and not yeah. normal, like mm-hmm. in a good way. Right? Nailed That's what I loved timing. about this movie yeah. was it was just unexpected quite a bit. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. No. It just yeah. It, it's. It's, yeah, it is sadly something that is it is missing in today's comedy. Yeah. Just like comedy movies, it's all it's too much about just getting the one liners or the sick joke or the sick burn or just like yeah. something gross. Yeah, you know, which is fine. Like, there's nothing wrong you with that. You can make it work, but, but it's, when so it's overdone. Oh, and I think yeah. it has been overdone. Yeah. It's been overdone since like the year 2000. Honestly, yeah. like since like American Pie onward, we've yeah. seen sort of like the same comedy film in terms of how it's made, in terms of like. Um, and uh, editing in terms of pacing, in terms of just like story structure, you kind of seen you they're predictable. Yeah, you're just wondering like what's the joke. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas like the timeless comedy films, um, like we like the one I keep going back to the most, and thank you Zach for this one is uh, like Monty Python and the Holy oh, Grail. Well, yeah. Like that is one of the most rewatchable films ever. Yeah, and yeah. like the jokes never get old just because they're not dated in this in in their own sense and also when it was made it's Mm -hmm. still timeless and that's what i think uh, as you were saying that physical and visual humor can remain like timeless uh more so 
than uh than say lines or jokes of the day because well, yeah, some jokes if, can get, if be dated your jokes are are like focused on cell phone usage or emoji yeah. usage yeah. or something yeah. then it's like obviously it's going to be dated in yeah, like you're dating a it. couple mm-hmm. years even yeah. as things change so rapidly or people what people find funny changes right yeah mm-hmm. so I, yeah that's definitely a symptom of that i think that it's uh like so something like monty python like the holy grail mm. is uh, it's helped by the fact that uh like the whole thing's kind of set in a historical setting right i think if you pick your setting right mm-hmm. or you're or you're doing something that's supposed to be like in the past or something it's going to age a little bit better mm-hmm. just because you're not uh you're not trying to be current all mm-hmm. the time no, it so looks old the, it's always going yeah to be so old. then the yeah. so then it'll fit because you you're aware of what you're doing and the time period you're you're making fun of or where you're setting it uh you, you kind of like especially if you're doing something in the past mm-hmm. then it's already going to be dated by setting but mm-hmm. in terms of the comedy it should should always be funny well yeah, the other yeah. the other thing is too just i mean again to you know go on monty python and the holy grail that we've just jumped well, in that alley on. <laughs> but that like... movie but that movie specifically yeah. like that type of thing the reason that that works big time too is it plays on a couple different planes i mean it's very silly that a lot of people can just grab onto but it's also very witty too mm-hmm. like there's something very mm-hmm. smart about it and that's like a lot of british humor in general yeah. and that's the thing like that's what helps it rise above a lot of others is yeah just have so many different things to grab onto mm-hmm. and yeah it just, just it, it doesn't they don't insult yeah. the audience intelligence you know? no no and that's the thing about this type of movie as well it's like it's not yeah again we keep saying it's a very silly movie yeah but it, it's not like this is so dumb i don't want to watch it anymore. sure like exactly. or you roll your eyes back like oh my god this is so like like it's like you're watching like your old high school movies you're just embarrassed yeah there's a difference between cringe and like oh this is silly fun yeah, yeah. And, and like every time i watch it like even like just just jack lemon just screaming yeah. and just laughing is funny is hilarious and yeah. and that's a lot of things about making a good comedy is just casting the right people yeah because you know there's they say like there when it comes to like comedians like there's comedian who's who tell jokes and then there's comedians who tell jokes in a funny way yeah so like they they're they're they they, they just add an extra level like they can just say the word what and just how they deliver it is hilarious sure. you know like mitch hedberg is a prime comedian yeah. example who his delivery is his like if I were to say his comedy, it would fall flat. Oh, of course. But when he says it, it is the Brilliant. funniest shit you've ever heard. Um, and to me, every cast member in this movie kind of is like, if you took one out, the whole thing wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, Comedy's Jack- always been about delivery, though. Oh yeah. I don't think that like, I don't think yeah. It's it's always about the way you've presented it. Mm-hmm. Um, because a lot of these, you take any, you think of the best comedies you've you've ever seen or. Uh, you know, I guess Monty, but the Holy Grail would yeah. be one of those. Yeah. But you think of those jokes just uh, just written down. Oh, yeah. Without the delivery or, or how they were presented, uh, they're not funny. They're, mm-hmm. not, they're not objectively funny. Mm-hmm. It, it takes uh, that delivery or, or how you decided to present those jokes, right? Yeah. So this, uh, like in, in that way, this movie uh, succeeded just because it, the, the delivery was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that... Uh, yeah, like 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 uh like Jack Lemon's character, he was uh he was always just kind of yeah, it's it's slight uh like twitches and 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 the way that you delay maybe delivering a line or something or or mm-hmm. put more punch into a certain word as opposed to another, right? Yeah. So like his drunk character just uh, the way he would always laugh at like 11. Mm-hmm. You know, like that was a choice, right? That was a choice that he's like, "Oh, when I laugh, it's going to be uh you know, it's going to be consistently high pitched and I'm never going to break. I'm never going to go up down up down. It's just going to be like ah, like all the way up, up at this like it's this very unique laugh, right? Yeah. And just tiny things like that or just the little sounds he'll make and things like that and yeah, I don't I don't know. It's just uh yeah, this this movie had a all the actors were kind of on point. I gotta mm-hmm. say, like, yeah. in terms of delivery, just yeah. it was I, I love the going off with the laugh. I love the part where like they're gonna switch uh, Professor Fate with the prince, and he, the guy's teaching Professor Fate how to laugh. Like, oh yeah, his other character, like no, a little bit more soprano, just a little <laughs> yeah. higher pitch. Ah, it was like this is great. <laughs> just like little, as you're saying, little things like that just go a long way. Or even just like the when uh, he's like the jig is up. 
and just doesn't just slowly raise his head <laughs> and leaves. <laughs> and they're just like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just like shuffling. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's just shuffling behind him. Yeah. And then, yeah, just like the movie was also really heavily advertised as having like the greatest pie fight scene in movie history. Which oh, okay. it's a great pie scene. I can't think of That's like. That's man that you didn't know you had. Yeah, right? Like, I think maybe like the del- infamous deleted yeah. scene from Doctor Strange Love maybe could have top this scene but well there's also blazing saddles but that was later oh yeah that one's actually pretty amazing that was 10 years later too. it was yeah to be fair it saw this movie and went all right let's go that's mel brooks like i can do better yeah (laughs) yeah probably did that movie is well more liked so and then whoever made around the world in 80 days also saw this and said i could do better except they didn't the jackie chan one yeah okay oh boy i've seen that have you yeah Uh, arnold's in it i watched it as a kid (laughs) he plays like a Oh god, like an African king or something. Oh, he yeah. does. Yeah, oh, he's got, got like a harem hair. and shit. Yeah, he's yeah. got like this weird like um, Moana like yeah, he's got, rock like, hair. Yeah, he's got like crimped like yeah. shoulder like hair. It's weird. Wasn't the original movie up for like it best won picture? best picture? I was like, one. It's yeah. considered the worst best picture. I was gonna say that there was some fact about it like that. Yeah, yeah. the one made in the fifties or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know who made that. I don't know anything about that. I don't movie. know anything about it either. Um, I just know they go around the world in apparently that many days. Well, it's been, yeah. <laughs> Have Based you read on the a much better. No. I don't know shit about it, man. I know there's a hot air balloon. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I used it. to have like all these old like like collection novels of famous stories, like Wizard of Oz, Treasure oh, okay. Island, yeah. and uh, the one we were just talking about, uh, Martyrs. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> classic, classic oh, uh, books. What classic. inside? Yeah. What a Serbian? What a Serbian? <laughs> Serbian film. Huh? Inside a Serbian just, film. The can book. Can we strike that? <laughs> Book. Can we can, can we strike that from ever being able to be brought up again? No. Like from actually, I have a story about this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, somebody recently did ask me, "Hey, if there was a movie you wouldn't recommend me watching, oh. what, <laughs> uh, what would you like that you've seen?" What was like, just like necromantic? No, I went Serbian film. Oh, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, don't watch Serbian film. Yeah, you don't. will, you will. There's things to get out of that movie. I don't think no. you get anything. There is, there no. is. I, I disagree with that. <laughs> I, for 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 us who could at least handle that shit one time, then maybe. But for like, hi hey, mom, you, you want to watch a movie? <laughs> well, okay, well no, that is a whole different, different thing. Like to general yeah. public, yeah. But if you're, you know, if you're down to get in the blood and the guts, you're down to get in the dirt <laughs> and the shit. Well, guess what? You saddle up and you get you some Serbian film. <laughs> You know, get the pop up book or after that. Or go for Salo if you want some a little more subtlety. Hey. Well, well Salo is, is a really smart movie. Well, well that's Sa- actually well, I that's want, different. Well, Salo is, a, fair, it, Salo is just an extreme movie, but yeah. it does have I, it does have its merits. Like, yeah, it's, for sure. it's actually like, like I, I could at least recognize. Well, yeah, no, because it's, yeah. it's, it's, it is a little bit more. It's more like politically motivated, and a Serbian film yep. claims to be too. But yeah. so can anything that extreme. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, honestly, once they've got your attention, they can say their messages whatever they want. It's about ass. <laughs> Uh, Alex reminded me, but uh, if I if I uh, I should mention that there was one noticeable cop in this movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Andrew, let's get the smart dumb cop ratio. Yes. Oh, there and we go. Was, Andrew's was, uh, cop watch this should order. be this should be a section a of segment. the show. This like, should be a segment. It, <laughs> yeah, Andrew, Andrew's cop watch. <laughs> We're gonna, yeah. Andrew's cop out or cop time. Cop out. Cop out. I, I, I like, cop I out. like that. We'll, yeah. we'll have a siren go off and be like, "What's yeah. that?" Or we'll, play, or, we'll, or, or we'll just or, or we'll just drop a random line from Kevin Smith's cop out. Oh no! So you're going to modify your fart machine to have a siren. In it every yeah, time. it'll just. Time. I won't be able to get it all the way to a siren, so it'll just be a mix of the two. <laughs> <laughs> and then just get a cap of a, like Tracy McGuire. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah. <laughs> no, a, hell no. 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 <laughs> you finished? <laughs> so yeah, that cop, uh, he gets my uh, stamp of approval just because he made the right choice. He's yeah. in the West, <laughs> so that's a lawless place. You cannot police the West. Yeah. Any cop would know that. Okay. Yeah. He came to what is essentially the biggest bar fight that I think I've ever seen, like a massive bar fight, and decided that as a cop, he is public enemy number one and is going to be targeted. So decided to, since all they had were badges and not uniforms, so essentially gave his uniform slash badge to a random person and got out of there. 
And that is the smartest thing he could have done in that situation. Yeah. So good job. Exactly. If your own personal safety is compromised, you can't help anyone, right? So you got to exactly. get all the coins yeah. good. <laughs> exactly. You're not helping anybody anyway. You're no. just adding to the body count. Yep. One big dose of fuck it. Exactly. And also, if I didn't see it, it didn't happen. Didn't yeah. It? yeah, exactly. I got to live to deal with this tomorrow. <laughs> So, yeah, good job. Good job. Gets my approval. Gets my stamp. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, probably the only, like, part of the movie which just seemed, like, to me, like, I would have cut because it just, it's a little forced, in my opinion, just to kind of get that best song Oscar. Oh, yeah. Um, that, it, that one did come right the fuck out yeah, of Yeah, and just, just, like, I feel like we, the considering only... Considering we already had already, a full-length song sequence yeah, earlier, yeah, which was yeah, me, that yeah. was much better. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was yeah. Because that other one was like a story. It was like yeah. it was like a full on story. You were listening. You were engaged with it. Yeah, uh, I just thought it, I thought it was kind of funny though. Like I know that that was probably not the intention, but well, well, I just single, thought it was like random and crazy to do that. The, and I was like, that's kind of funny. Yeah. With the subtitles, I think it might have been intentionally funny because that was unnecessary. But it was at the time too, though. I mean, at the I mean, it was a little after. Yeah, I but guess, the other but... song didn't have the no. subtitles. No, like the subtitle was there just. Just to add a joke to that song. I think there's so, nothing yeah. funny about that song. Exactly. Because exactly. I thought that was really funny. Yeah, it is just yeah. that basically that's something you would hear on the radio. That's the yeah. that's the promotional song. That's their their, their my heart will go on. You know. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah and that 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 did drag. I agree. Yeah, that, that's yeah. the only part where I'm just like, because it just like it, it's before like ten minutes before the movie's over too, and it's just after this big epic like escape and all, and also stops for a song. And then they, the two, like, bitch and moan for a little bit about their, you know, conflicting ideals leading to the end and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it was really, yeah, like, you didn't really need it. Um, like, you could have played that in, during the end credits or something. Like, they had the time. They had the space. They were reusing certain tracks. They could have inserted it somewhere. So, mm. um, but, yeah, no, I, I love just hearing, like, all the, like, old like, did you guys, like, recognize any of, like, the famous sound effects or anything like that? Like, that kind of trigger. Like, when you were saying, like, is this, like, a Roadrunner run cartoon? I did feel like that. And I was like, yeah, that's actually yeah, like what... dropping bombs, like, from, like, Zeppelins, yeah. mini yeah. Zeppelins. It was just so... Like, that's silly. I want right? a pedal-powered but... flying machine. <laughs> right, yeah. It was, it was uh, very, like, yeah, Roadrunner-esque kind of silliness, mm-hmm. right? So... Yeah. Yeah, I, it it stuck to that the whole way though. I think so. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> kind of why again I was okay with like, you know, some of the, you know, th- things they were making fun of. Mm-hmm. And all those old cartoons would use uh, classical music as their backdrop as well. And yeah. this movie yeah. was no exception either. I loved yeah. the the just like the brassy big band kind of room papa mm-hmm. arrangements that they had. Mm-hmm. It kind of it made it feel big. Yeah. It made the the kept the momentum going. It was, it was it was fun. Yeah, no, there's there's definitely like one piece of music which is like da 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 da. You know, like that like uh, when they're like driving through Paris near the end. Mm. Like da 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 da. Yeah, I actually like that. Uh, one a that lot that too. one is completely from Looney Tunes. Like uh-huh. I've heard, I've heard that quite a bit. And then well, honestly, the whole movie felt like a live action. It cartoon, did. Yeah. So, like like yeah. It, it stuck to that Mm -hmm. which i think was good um uh and almost like a tribute because actually the looney tunes cartoons like from what we remember had ended three years prior to that oh right um like the last official like uh when they did like like 60 cartoons a year or something like that yeah it it stopped they closed their studio in the 60s um so it was almost maybe like in tribute for that Mm. um and also one thing that none of us have mentioned yet because i think i've never seen laurel and hardy so they mentioned yeah, that, this, saw is, the tribute. that yeah. this is for them and all that. So I figured like there's probably so many like like you know, I guess I've never seen Lauren Hardy, so I really can't say can't say whether or not they like made tribute to them or like certain things or callbacks to like famous sketches or anything like that. So Yeah. Anything like that, uh, I, I really don't know. Um one thing I mentioned uh, and I was just curious, um has anyone ever watched Wacky Wacky Races? No, the old no. cartoon? I don't no. think so. No. Oh wow! I'm the only one who watched that too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only um, familiar with it because South Park made a reference to that's it. That's true. They time. did. Yeah. No, the wacky races. In the, the Uber episode, right? Yeah, in the Uber episode. Yeah. No, it was the. Yeah, that's no, funny. Um. Yeah. No, wacky races. Um. Does anyone like know about it like at all? Nope. Like, are there wacky racers? Well, yeah. It's pretty much just like this old like Hanna Barbera so, cartoon, like in terms of like Flintstone Jetson ass type animation oh, okay. made in the '60s, oh. and all it was was just these 
exactly like like these over the top cars. They all do these big gadgets and all these things. And there's like eight different characters. There's the um, there's uh, the like the evil like guy who never wins. You know, like um, Professor Fade, and he has a sidekick who's a dog um, who does like Roger, 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 Roger. He like he's known for like doing that sound effect. There's a woman as well. I forget like Miss Pitspot, Pitspot or something, oh, okay. Pitstop or something like that. Um, and she has like the pussy wagon movie or something like that. Oh, okay. Something like that. I don't know. But it went on for like 90 episodes and all that. Oh, wow. So wow. in the 60s, that's pretty pretty large actually. Yeah. Um, actually, even today, most animated shows don't go that long. Nope. Um, like even, Dragon Ball Z or Simpsons. <laughs> um, oh, actually, that's better. Yeah. Or South Park. Or Pokemon. Those... Or um, uh, One, One Piece. <laughs> No, you lose. No one piece. No one piece. Is... No one piece. Is... One yeah. piece. Um, Detective yeah. Conan or Case Closed. Or Naruto. On what like, you're I in. mean, like you could pick a lot of anime and, and yeah. make that case. But... Oh, with anime. Oh, sorry, with anime. Yeah, like, one, yeah exactly. one piece has like I don't even know how many episodes. It's like almost a thousand, isn't it? Or... Oh yeah. I would believe it. Yeah. yeah. There's the the manga has been going for ridiculous. Show's long. been since ninety nine. Yeah, there's probably I don't yeah. know if it's a thousand, it might be like seven hundred, eight hundred. I think it's like eight hundred. Well, Pokemon's yeah. like and manga's over, probably is up like, to be, like beyond a thousand. Oh, probably. Yeah, like yeah. Pokemon was like over like six hundred episodes, and Simpsons are over that too, actually now. Yeah. Um, but Simpsons been on for like since like eighty nine. Well, yeah, and, yeah. And then uh, Pokemon was like, came in like ninety seven, I think. Something like that. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was around then. Yeah. But um, but yeah no like <laughs> I I had seen Wacky Races like growing up actually like, I used to watch that with my sisters all the time uh, and it's like you watch it now it's trash it's sure. just it's just like why would you ever watch this nowadays mm-hmm. but when you do like compare it with this movie you can just see so many like especially with the Professor Fate character and like uh, I can't remember the bad guy's name off the top of my head in the show mm-hmm. but it's like twisty mustache big hat yeah same car you know just doing all these things trying to sabotage everybody but it just count backfires on them mm. uh yeah no that was the uh i guess the lasting legacy from this movie i mean there was a lot of like um some like crazy racing cartoons There's also to a degree speed racer as well that's one too that's like really crazy and that was an an wasn't that an anime first though it yeah it was like um yeah like that show and everything was was really weird but that one again was a, it was like a link a little later it was later than that but not by a whole lot i don't think yeah i'm not sure when speed race i've only seen the movie um i want to say it was like late 60s or something i feel like 68 or something sticks out to me but i could be wrong i don't know hmm. but uh but that one's another one where it's like the characters are really exaggerated and it's like a race and mm-hmm. all that stuff but it's it's different too yeah. at the same time I, I do get that yeah and this was also like the first uh i don't want to say it was the first team up of tony curtis and jack lemon since uh some got some like it hot oh okay yeah. um but uh yeah those two did a couple movies together as well yeah. um i haven't seen a lot of tony curtis um his movies like really not um, really I have, i'm having a hard time trying to remember his movies mm-hmm. um but i think this is probably the one i've probably the only one i've really seen of his and, and i've seen jack Lemmon a lot of stuff well yeah he's like mm-hmm. one of the most famous actors yeah period um and peter falk like we've seen him in a bunch of stuff yeah. and nally would um uh I haven't seen her a lot of stuff either, but I more know her for the, the tragedy with her, uh-huh. um, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, because that that story never goes away. Unfortunately, that's one of like most like consistent uh, Hollywood like infamous Hollywood legends. Oh yeah. With her and all that. So, um, but yeah, no, uh, we're getting close to the end near the episode. So actually, I feel like might as well just get some some final thoughts. You want to uh, wrap up? Let's wrap it up. Let's race to the finish. No, we're just going to start all over again at oh, the end okay. of the movie and just do the whole episode again. We're going to do the we're remake. Gonna go yeah. we're, we're going to do the return we're gonna trip. Go, we're going to do this my way. Yeah. My way. <laughs> I went my way. I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> that, fu- that bit fucking killed me. Oh, when they the do end. it all over again? Where it's like Paris to New York. I was like, <laughs> fuck. That's funny. But that's so, that's so great for his character that uh, yeah. it's that's the one thing like none of them break their like their dis they don't break their discipline of who their characters are like no. it's so fitting that he wouldn't accept like just winning yeah because um, he didn't really win yeah it was a, it yeah. wasn't an honorable yeah. win yeah. yeah or not honorable not win honorable, he wanted to win was... his way where like right. he had the power yeah his methods his intentions were hardly honorable but... yeah it was more out of spite <laughs> well yeah <laughs> and pure ego yeah because he knows that he still won 
won in a way by letting him win. Right? Yeah. yeah, and he hates that. Yeah. Uh, so mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, I just I just love that 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 never changes. You know, ne- they never become friends at the end. Like, nope, they're just gonna keep going. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's great. Like we yeah, don't. Well, in the cartoon style too, right? It's yeah. just that we end it to start again. Yeah. Tune you know? in next mm-hmm. week. Yeah. So it's yeah, it was totally fitting. Yeah. yeah kind of like the, the 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 endless chase trope kind yeah. of. Yeah. Very yeah. Roadrunner. <laughs> basically what that was. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Technically, on Earth, there is no finish line. So yeah, you know, so right. you can keep going. <laughs> Honestly, that was probably the right decision. <laughs> yeah. No, and like yeah, ending, and I just love like just the ending too. You just like with I like, push the button, Max. Oh <laughs> <Just> yeah, like, <laughs> Max. You, yeah. I like how he blows up his garage twice. Yeah, <laughs> the exact same scenario with the dogs, and they're all running around yeah. and shit. Like like that moment when pure like all the moments where just pure chaos is happening, and they're yeah. all just running around screaming and just trying to get away or trying to like just do just trying to get out of the circ- the situation they're in is just always was hilarious. Just mm-hmm. killed. Um, so yeah, so we'll get some, uh, final thoughts. I will start to my right with, uh, Mr. Alex. I would definitely recommend this film to people. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's underrated? Hmm. I think for the age that it is 53 years ago, being a comedy, yeah, I will go with underrated. And like I said, I would recommend it to people, but I'm not going to recommend it to just anybody because if you try and recommend this film to someone who's 20 something and they're they're an SJW and they're into mumble rap and anything that's <laughs> that's <Mumble completely> rap. <laughs> modern at this point in time mm-hmm. i don't think they'll sit for the humor and i don't think they'll sit for the runtime mm-hmm. cuz this is an older show it appeals to an older audience I'm and, sitting right here, Alex. <laughs> and you're going to wait your turn. <laughs> <laughs> like a good boy. <laughs> you watch your mouth, young man. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's a different period in time. It's got, a, I don't want to say a certain type of humor, but the humor back then is different than today. Mm-hmm. So I don't think absolutely anyone would love this movie the humor back then was not concerned about stepping on toes that's true that and the subject matter and like you were saying zach it it takes everything over the top yes and and that's fine i like that the 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 equality for women thing i think they went over the top with that but i think yeah. it was for a reason because mm. it brought the, t- the two characters together in the end that was the so idea, i think, I think that's yeah. That's where they were going with it. It's all mm. about extreme personalities clashing and then being forced to work together. So yeah. I feel like yeah. it works. Yeah, yeah just yeah. like like, I, like it's always like a good like moral lesson of like yeah, you can have your extreme opinions on things, but as long as you can come together and have find a compromise and find common ground, that's ultimately what's important because then yeah. society can move forward. Exactly. Um, instead of being in a stalemate and constantly bitching at each other, which gets you nowhere. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But yeah. which we've seen with certain topics time and time again. Correct. Yeah. Some people just don't learn, and they just prefer to bitch. Exactly. <laughs> like I was saying, if I had the goggles, <laughs> I would have just pulled that out, and I would have gone and gone and gone with it. I should have written it down, because there were some things I'm like, ooh, that wouldn't fly today. Yeah. But I'm 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 giving into the entertainment. Mm-hmm. So that's why I, I liked the movie. I laughed as loud as I did. Yeah. And as many times as they had jokes, I was with it. Mm-hmm. But like I said... Two hours and 40 minutes. They could have cut it down a little bit in some scenes, mm-hmm. but fine. You've got to go on that roller coaster of the ups and downs because you're going to, like I said, you're going to wear the audience down if you're up all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Good film. Good pick. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate the kindness, man. All right. Um, yeah, no, I just did kind of go off what you were saying as well. Um, just, yeah, if this was edited, if we were to re-edit it, it'd probably be about 20 minutes shorter. Just in terms of, just in terms of pacing, you know, certain, like, like, I, like even like certain things you can cut out. Um, like I mentioned, like the sing-along and the, the song at the end is like, I don't think that was necessary. I felt like more like padding, but yeah, like if it was made today, um, if you had like the exact same footage and just in terms of how we edit films today, in terms of what a modern audience is expecting, they want something a little quicker, a little bit, you know, four, four second average shot lengths, you know, instead of mm. this film was probably like 10 second average yeah. shot lengths, you know, just little things like that would condense the movie. But 
like like we were saying like there's so much in this movie that at times it's like i know you felt differently but at times like the runtime didn't feel as long yeah because there at least there was something going on all the time Mm -hmm. um because it like i said was never boring um Mm -hmm. not and it always kept your attention um but yeah i do i agree with you i see like you know certain people would get a kick out of this movie i don't think some would just because it's not an edgy in your face you know oh my god did you see that type of like a comedy that just like you have to see this this is insane like something out of jackass or something like that. yeah you know yeah but um but yeah uh mr andrew final thoughts do you think this is underrated um yeah i mean considering that i haven't uh like i hadn't heard about it and if it's if it's as old uh you know considering where uh when it came out and I hadn't ever heard at it about it at all. That does to me mean that it's underrated because it should have at least been on the radar, mm-hmm. considering that it was funny and it was good. It was a, it was a it was a really good comedy. So if I can laugh at it today, then it should have that at least enough of a timeless quality that it should have been on my radar, or at least somebody should have mentioned it. Mm -hmm. The fact that I'd never even heard about it means that it's, it's been buried in the past Mm -hmm. or at least that's what I think. So yeah, yeah, I, I I would agree with that. I think Alex underestimates 20 somethings (laughs) a little bit. Greatly, greatly. Yeah. Because you know, um, I don't think, uh, most 20 somethings are that (laughs) self-serious that they, that they need to, Take everything apart. I think that uh, you can still let yourself go to ridiculousness. I would, I would, I would point to the internet to prove, to, as my proof that uh, young people definitely let themselves go into just ridiculous, silly, like silly worlds and get lost in them. Just because there are like, just look at some of the most ridiculous like YouTube videos or Wally World or yeah, it's just ridiculous <laughs> shit where you where you let yourself go into, uh, you know, this madness, right? There's shit that you'll show. Well, I think you'll show uh, similar style of of different, like a different kind of silliness, but still silly nonetheless. Show that to some to a senior now, and they will hate it. They will fucking hate it because that's like the whole elders react thing. You show yeah. them, they're all crusty and not like. Crusty. <laughs> <laughs> that's in my day, God damn yeah. it. Honestly, they're just like, well, crusty in personality. I don't know about that. Crusty. <laughs> not you know. in their pants, right? No, yeah, I don't know about uh. that. But like, you'll you'll see those those kind of like uh, comments. For some of them are are, are you know kind of younger at heart, right? But like, uh, I think. Uh, no, younger younger people don't always need that edgy comedy. I think. I think that uh, you, if you earn the laughs, if it, if you really earn the laughs, that's what people are looking for, regardless of age. So uh, I think that this earned every every laugh that I that it got mm-hmm. from me. It wasn't cheap in any way. It it uh, it it set it had a good setup and follow through, mm-hmm. and I I appreciate that a lot. So I I liked it quite a bit, mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh yeah like it's it's it is i think not as dated as some of what you guys have said i think it actually works today just as it well just as well as it did back then for a lot of the jokes Mm -hmm. maybe some of the stuff like yeah i could pick a couple things here or there Mm -hmm. but i was impressed with how much of that runtime just works just works uh would have worked uh well it obviously worked then and if that had come out today Honestly, it would have worked for me. Like a lot of those jokes, uh, I would say a majority. So, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, if I, I'll pick out the Indian thing or I'll pick out the, the, the woman thing, the woman's rights thing, because that's not really on the table today. Or that's not something that like, we don't talk about it that way anymore. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like I'll, I'll pick some things out, but otherwise, like everything just works. The pie fight, like, do you think you couldn't make that today and people would laugh their asses off at that? Like, of course they would. Mm-hmm. You know, audiences would appreciate it. Yeah, especially like with how far they go with it. Just like, 
Yeah. Like they don't just have these like cheap like little like cream pies. Like they built they made it's full that real pies. It's that follow through. Yeah. Like I said, like yeah. they really follow through on every joke, which mm-hmm. is why it works. It's not just that, like a half ass thing. Cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's well, like bigger I than love a how that starts it. Yeah. He dives into that cake. They, and he dives so into Jack it Lemon twice. ends up in the cake twice. Oh, that's right. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because both of his characters end up in yeah. that cake. cake. Holy shit. Like I was, I was, so that's another weird thing. I was just staring at that cake. Yeah. Because I was like, what the fuck? That's like, it's not cardboard or anything no, or like no. shitty. It's like, I'm like, that's a cake. Yeah. That's so beautiful. That's a real cake. The amount of time it would take to make that. Like, oh, holy fuck. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, just, I don't know, it's, it's crafted. Yeah. 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 I, I heard they had to keep some doctors on standby during the pie fight scene just in case you suffocated. Yeah, it makes from sense. getting all the cream yeah. on your you face. You lose all your airways. Oh, yeah. like And also, just go, because you saw sometimes like, they would spit out like a good handful just of... Whipped cream. Yeah, just like... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I almost suffocated when I was younger due to bubble gum. So, oh, yeah, you know, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You know how I, you know how that was fixed? My, uh, my brother just popped the hole in my mouth yeah, and I, I could breathe again. I say, like, when you just pop a hole <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I chewed, so, I chewed this, 100 pieces this and then it, simple, and it blew up. It went... Oh and I was panicking. I was like, oh, no, what do I do? And then, bam! And I was like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just went, like, I watched my brother and he goes poorly. Like, oh. Now that's now that's physical comedy. Right See, that is yeah, See, that's, that, that yeah. works. That's, that's set up and follow through yeah. right there. That's it was good. all my hair, like uh, everything. It took forever. Like, I think yeah. I had to cut some of the hair off. It's like, and stuff. It's like, like the, it was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. No. It's good. It's too bad they didn't fall like when Lisa got like in the Simpsons got uh, oh, gum in her epic. hair. Oh yeah, and then yeah, they, like so. Marge like, oh, peanut butter will work. Stays on there. Oh, maybe honey will work. Yeah, and <laughs> so it just everything. keeps going on yeah. and on and on. And then mm-hmm. other neighbors like, well, maybe we can try this. And Cleo's like, well, maybe we can try tobacco or something. I don't oh know. <laughs> like it gets worse and worse until they cut Jeez. it off. Just shave her head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, I like the new haircut. It's great. She walks outside for one second. <laughs> puts on a hood. He just walks away. Uh, yeah. Any uh, any uh, final things, Andrew? Uh, I I I liked it a lot. Thanks for showing it because uh, yeah, it was surprising. It mm. was surprising. I didn't expect it. Uh, so mm. good job. Thank you. Good choice. Good. Um, Mr. Odell. Yes. Speak. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> one other thing. Oh, uh, no. oh no. One other thing. All right. Uh, it was fantastic in a group. Like I like, yeah. I, yeah. I, I forgot yeah. to mention I loved watching it with all of you guys. It was yeah, really- no, I definitely liked it way more than. Uh, it's definitely one of those group movies where, like, even like we're like at some points like you're talking over the movie or something like that. But it's it's not one of those movies where you have to like constantly shut up and like pay attention to it. Yeah, no, because. Like you'll just tr- turn away, and then when you turn back, you don't miss a beat, and all of a sudden, like five seconds later, you're laughing your ass off because of a joke. It, it yeah. adds to it because um, laughter is contagious, and everything. Yeah. And all the stuff that you guys are finding funny, you're adding to it. It's mm-hmm. it's such a group experience, right? Yeah. A good yeah. comedy yeah. is a group experience. Well, that's why, wow. like, I think, like yeah. the one, like I'm gonna go on a little bit of a, a, a movie theaters rant is a that's where I feel like comedies. If they can come back and be great, there's nothing better than sitting with a pack theater. Get a draw of people. Yeah, yeah, like certain like I've had the experience where like like I watched um the movie Ted. Yeah. Um the first time I watched it was with you, Zach, and I think you too, was Andrew. It? And maybe you yeah, as well. I, I can't remember. I don't yeah. think I was there on your first. Okay, feeling. but the first time we were there, it was one of the best audiences. They were howling, uh, and I was with the movie. Everyone was on board. It was great. And then the second time I watched it, I watched it with a different audience. Same yeah. packed house, but much quieter. Mm-hmm. And oh. it made a completely different experience. Yeah. It totally changed the movie. Like certain jokes yeah. didn't hit as hard. And I was like, but that was funny. Yeah. The first time I watched it, it, it doesn't almost... even need to be a packed house. It's just those the yeah. people you're with. It's like just I need a responsive crowd. Totally. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I saw Blockers just yesterday. Yeah. And I there were only maybe maybe like 20 like 30 people in the movie oh, in the wow. theater it wasn't that packed that's uh, shocking it's no i think movie. everybody's going to see ready player one right now uh, mm. but uh because the theaters are busy but then not those movies so <laughs> there were like maybe like 20 30 people in the theater but everybody was engaging with it everybody was laughing at mm. the same kind of stuff and you were kind of bouncing off the crowd like yeah. those 20 people yeah and it just worked because of that for me yeah mm-hmm. so yeah I, I, it's 
who you watch comedies with for yeah. sure well that's why i love the rio and stuff like that yeah I mean, you know not... well, and like community theaters and stuff, yeah well because right? that crowd though too especially if you go to their midnight screenings like mm-hmm. if you go to those shows and that's why i love especially the midnight screenings let alone the regular screenings too is that yeah that crowd that goes there is like that type of crowd like if it was a really solid comedy that everybody can get into it would it's just crazy like yeah. crazy good or if it's like a really good action film like i remember seeing the warriors there and before i had seen the warriors a couple times and it's it's a good movie oh yeah and i'm bringing that movie back yeah, yeah. i do, too bad i don't have my uh my uh, glasses this time oh wait oh <laughs> oh look yeah. Yeah. <laughs> warriors <laughs> anyways fuck that but uh you did that last time with me. Yeah, yeah, that one was out that. of nowhere, though. But, uh, but yeah, but no, the Rio, again, going back to the Warrior screening, um, yeah, it was a really good crowd. Mm-hmm. Like, it, there's nothing like it. I mean, seeing a really good crowd, it just heightens your experience. Yeah. And it made that movie way better than I remembered it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And it's just, it's just great, like, to see it with a packed house. Or not a packed house, as yeah. Andrew said, but just people who are kind of on the same wavelength, yeah. who are into the movie and engaged. Yeah, that's why yeah. I feel like the, like the theatrical experience will, like, will never truly die. Because I've even, like, reading reports now that Generation Z yeah. is, like, is already getting bored of the internet. You know, just being on, like... I could see. And, and no. it makes sense, because, like, the thing, the, the, draw, the, the drawback about, you know, having, watching movies alone on your phone all the time is that you do lose a little bit of that audience you know participation and that's Mm. the one thing that comedies and and also horror films yeah i think do really well they are great at drawing an audience in because you just want to see that big horror film and you want and you love just when you're in a when a horror movie works like uh and you're with a great audience like when i saw the conjuring 2 a couple years ago and the crowd where you can just feel the energy and the 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 the, the, like how tense everyone is and just like you hear little parts of them like you hear some of the chorus squirming and it's just like it just it just elevates the experience and it makes you scared too because you're kind of with it and i'm like even i start like i don't want to look but I know the movie. <laughs> and when I saw that, there was like 20 people in the theater and we saw it like in, as a matinee. Yeah. And it was like fucking terrifying. And mm-hmm. it was, I mean, to be fair, like that goes with the craft of the movie and all that too. That too, It's yeah. just a really good movie. But yeah, but yeah just the crowd and stuff mm-hmm. and just the reactions yeah. and all that stuff is really solid. Well, I'd say like horror and comedy are the ones, the genres that benefit most well, from the Well, they evoke the most reactions typically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, you get both ends of the yeah. spectrum, right? Well, it's the most appropriate uh, genre films to get really a reaction yeah. out of because any other type of movies you usually you're telling the audience to shut up yeah you're talking. like in the middle yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah whether it's dramas or anything like that it's it's hard because laughing is like yeah everyone laughs and it, it it adds to that's why sitcoms they have a laugh track because it works yep. yeah you know even yeah. if it's fake laughter somehow when you hear a laugh track behind a certain joke it kind of elevates it a little totally yeah um you know hey if it works don't 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 fix it so yeah yeah and and like you were saying though i think that it's kind of evolving on the internet like you're mm-hmm. saying is uh like if you look at twitch streams or let's plays and why they're so popular mm-hmm. is because people want to laugh with other people yeah right? yeah mm-hmm. and react like you would just watch the funny thing or you would watch the thing if mm-hmm that's all you cared about but clearly even the the internet generation cares about the audience aspect of it or a shared experience because that's why twitch is huge that's Mm -hmm. why youtube has so many let's players and and so many people that engage with their audiences just because yeah you want to share with people you want a shared experience yeah and that's why and then again that's why i don't see like like again movie theaters and even to an extent just public gathering like events in general like whether it's sports or you know music uh, concerts or theater or anything like that i don't yeah. think that will truly go away because there is something about being in a, a with the, that group of people just it adds to the atmosphere it provides a more immersive yeah experience. like it just like like it's like when you go to like say like a metallica show or something like yeah. that just there's something about just being around like 30,000 people also all going there for the same reason all there for the same reason Getting all, covered in sweat that's all reason. equally going ape shit and all just loving it it just it it, it just yeah just it just it's an ex- experience that you know you can only achieve at a certain time not all the time mm-hmm. but only for those moments and it just it, it elevates it it yeah. just makes it better it makes it more like you accomplish something like you're actually doing something yeah instead of just sitting around and by yourself and just listening all the time there's something 
yeah, it's it's more human in a sense, you know. Well, that's that's I think that's an advertisement of why I like you know floor tickets better than seats. Because, oh yeah, because floor tickets you feel like you're more into it and you can do what you want. Whereas you're in seats, I feel like it's a little more like watching it on TV, right? It's a yeah. little more of just that removal when you have that live experience, right? And to be fair, it is still like great, mm. you know, if, even if you get a seat and things. But I I just it's just way better but you like can also on the floor. Catch picks and sticks. That too. I mean, you get that merch. You get that free <laughs> merch. That free she. Free swag. Yeah. Swag. <laughs> but uh, but yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Anyways, I uh, figured it'd be a good time to Zacho. Um, overall, oh. what did you think of the movie? Speak now. It's cool again. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Would you say it's underrated? Under, yeah. Uh, so under it was preach. under preach y'all on preach <laughs> preach to the low. We gotta get that younger demo, guys. Yeah. Under preach. Yeah. Yeah. Little pump, my boy. <laughs> buys buys music. Um. So the great race. Uh. Yeah. So I. I mean. Yeah. Straight out of the gate, I would say it's underrated. And I mean, obviously, I use myself in that because I've seen a lot of movies. Like I watch older movies, and you know, I'm into them. Like you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, this movie, I never even heard of. Like I, I heard it first when you mentioned it a couple years ago and I never ended up watching it. It just kind of fell through. But Mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, I've I've never heard of it. It's never really mentioned. Um, It might've made a decent amount back in the day, but it hasn't, you know, through the years and years, nobody has really uh, talked about it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I would say it's definitely underrated. Also, I think just the big laughs you get and the consistency of the laughs uh, and just how unexpectedly timed they are. Like they just pop up. You don't see them coming. You can't predict it a mile away you know, things like that. It's, uh, yeah, it's really well done overall and better than a lot of comedies that come out. I mean, a lot of comedies that we were talking about nowadays, only until very recently, um, have just been kind of poor. I mean, the timing's out there. You've seen it before. Mm -hmm. It's very predictable. Whereas this one had big laughs. Like it had me like rolling in my seat a little bit at different times. Right. Um, and even the little laughs and the subtle ones that you don't expect, and things like that uh, that maybe hit you a little bit later. And just, yeah, it's just the consistency of the laughs is the biggest thing of this movie. Because in terms of the movie, it's just like a point A to point B movie. It's a road movie, yeah. right? But just the detours they do and just the different things that they bring to it and the overtop characters and all that stuff is just a lot of fun. And, and like we'd all kind of said, it's like a live action cartoon in a way, which is kind of awesome as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like, like I'd mentioned, the only thing is the length. And I mean, a lot of people will probably think that's pretty daunting unless it's like a Batman film or something. Yeah. But, uh, but at the same time, it's like, and it won't be for everybody either. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but at the same time, if you're into like film and you want like a good family film for everybody, you know, that everybody can sit down and watch together on like a matinee. I yeah. think this is a pretty solid choice and it's, it's safe for everybody. Everybody will like it. Um, yeah. I, I'd say go see it for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. It's, it's definitely like a- after today, it's, it's hands down like a group movie. Absolutely. Like, yeah. It's definitely like, yo, there's like, as you said, there's five of us here. Let's pick a movie and like, Oh, this would be great. You know? Yeah. And yeah, no, obviously like I'm, I'm very pleased how it's, it's turned out so far. Mm-hmm. Um, so finally, uh, we'll start where we began. Rylan. All right. Um, well, I mean, I can't really say much that, uh, that everybody else hasn't already been said. Uh, I would also agree this is an underrated, uh, film. So I hadn't heard of it previously except through you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it's an epic over the top, absurd adventure comedy. I feel like most people people who watch it are gonna get some entertainment out of it or a lot of entertainment out of it especially if you do watch it with the with the group and that got the group dynamic going um i would i actually i do want to watch this uh, again obviously not right away because it is quite uh, quite the long haul but i feel like there would be a lot of little details and like little hints and nods and little mm-hmm. camera tricks and possibly little uh, set deck uh, and or little prop mm-hmm. hints and stuff that i would wanted to go through and see if I could see if I could catch again because I feel like there's probably a lot of like little little details that you don't see on the first view I feel like it's it's one of those because they just just everybody involved is just having so much fun here mm-hmm. so it's definitely uh for me it warrants uh repeat viewings for sure and I would recommend it to just about anybody unless you're one of those people who 
like here's one political joke and gets all bent out of shape yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no definitely like uh this is the third time i've watched it, so i can definitely say yeah it's definitely one of those movies where when you watch it every time you watch it you'll see something new that mm makes you laugh uh, more than to say the first time you saw it or you just didn't notice it because you were too busy laughing at the previous scene. Exactly, yeah. Because um, like, even like when I'm, I was watching it, like when you guys were laughing, I'm like, I already knew some of the jokes mm. and I'm like, oh, you're missing this one line. It's so yeah, funny. Yeah. Um, so it is like one of those like, yeah, when you watch it, like I would like watch it like, because it is a long movie, like one to two years, you know, give it a good space. You got to give it a break. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I haven't, like I haven't watched this since we, uh, since we lived in Burnaby. Um, oh okay yeah that makes sense yeah that was yeah. the last time I watched it um, where did you move to what current address <laughs> yeah we're, we're coming in that uh, mail bill yeah, yeah no it's, uh, it's, uh, it's <laughs> what that mail do yeah, no, it's, uh, it, the address is one two shut the fuck up Andrew <laughs> 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 all right uh, any uh, thing final or are you um no, I mean, I'm, I'm as a as a costumer, I would like to go back and drool over all those ball gowns <laughs> in that one sequence. But oh uh, yeah, the castle. For, for, yeah. For, 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 as far as everything else goes, I, I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. How about them tires? Oh yeah, the Brit- Ooh, the Bridgestones yeah, or Firestone. Yeah. Oh yeah, I yeah. love that. Crispy. I, I love that. Like, uh, of Crispy course, tires. of course, Leslie's car is white, but he even has white wall tires on his car too, and they're spotless <laughs> yeah, for the yeah. entire journey. I know. <laughs> nothing yeah and i love like he's got like the uh, press phase also got like the black smoke as well yeah, the yeah. everything and then how he just labels everything with like his braid with his name and the skull and everything. yeah it's just like how it's how just, how evil can so you get funny. yeah, yeah it's it's, yeah it just loves loves being evil yeah. relishes it yeah and just yeah i just love that part like when he's in like the meeting room and he's got like the fake beard and, oh yeah and, and he, he just like it off just i love that little look he gives um when he realizes he's been the out up. he yeah. goes and then just runs yeah. out the window and just makes it dive. You're just like, what the hell? And he's like, I will get you. <laughs> and then you just know it's going to nothing. You just like, it is like a Roadrunner cartoon where you know the joke. You yeah. know he's going to fail. Yeah. But you just want to see how. Yeah. yeah. That's, and it's it's that's, the execution. Yes, yeah, the execution not, yeah. and just seeing how they're going to fail. Is it going to backfire here? Nope. Here? Oh, 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 there he goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to see the joke happen on camera, or are you going to hear it off camera, like when the yeah. bomb... That uh, was good. ...drop it and it drops yeah. That reminded me a lot of Roadrunner. That's a classic oh, yeah. one. That's where a thing. It That's, goes around yeah. the corner, and the camera just sits yeah. there, and then you see the explosion. Or even the first yeah. one with the hot air balloon, where they're, they, they're running... It's coming down, and they run from the spot where they think it's going to hit oh, them. Oh, yeah. And, and then moves, it hits them. It falls right, right on Right where yeah, they're yeah. standing. Um, yeah, no, this is like anything Warner Brothers. It's just, it's covered in this movie. Sure. Yeah. And um, it's going to be interesting because um, for a little behind the scenes, it was like, I was picking between this and like another big epic comedy movie, yeah. which is, a, it's a mad, 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 mad world. Um, that one is a little bit more well known. Yeah. So that's why I went with this one first, but they're very similar in terms of like, they're both like epic, long chase movies in a sense. Um, and the tone's probably a little similar too. Very right? similar, like yeah. a big epic, over the top comedy slapstick, uh, mixed in with some outrageous different characters. And this one is um, the difference between this one and this Mad Mad World. Mad Mad World is a big ensemble piece full of, of every famous comedian at the time. Yeah, famous uh, even old school ones like I think like the Three Stooges are in it for like yeah. a brief shot. You're like whoa. Um, so it's like if they made like a huge comedy today with like the Judd Apatow crew and the Frat Pack crew got, all got together and made one giant movie. Well, it's apparently the original Rat Race, right? Is, it is. is. Yeah, Rat Race is essentially a remake of it. That, so, yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, so, because of like this, it's so similar, I'm probably going to wait a little bit before we get to It's Mad Mad My World Makes because sense. Yeah. I, I feel like if I were to show it as my next movie, it'd be way too similar. It feels a little repetitive. A little like, repetitive. Like, totally it's derivative and... of what you... Like it would come across as maybe a little derivative, a little like we've just seen this movie. Yeah, because I've because um, I've heard of that movie and I hear it's like people who've seen it have said yeah. it's a classic. I've also heard that it's like one of the ideal seventy millimeter ones. Yeah, to see too. I I, I personally do like it's a man man world a little more than it's a great race. Yeah, um, just because I think it just like all like it just kind of hits certain marks a little bit more, and okay. it, I think it's just a little little more crazier. Okay, um, and it's a little simpler too. It's just like they're all trying to get this uh, money. Yeah. Under the well, big X, uh, this win the big prize. The yeah. gr- the great race came out first, right? No, uh, I think it's a Man Man World came out one year prior. 
Oh, okay. And actually, that is one. So it's not. So this is derivative. Yeah, and actually, that was one of the things that uh, the critics at the time were saying. Like, this is like, it kind of fell under the trap that, say, Full Metal Jacket did. Yeah. Where it came out at the same time as other, say, great similar films. Yeah. Whereas in the Full Metal Jacket, that was like Platoon. Oh, of and, course. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, there was another Vietnam movie that came out. There was a the lot of Vietnam movies. Born, yeah. uh, Born in Fort July, that was stuff a like that. Couple years after, I think. Yeah, yeah. there was another one that like, came out like the same time as Platoon. I just can't remember Hamburger what it was called. Hill? Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, there was eighty-eight. Yeah, there was a lot. There was yeah. too many Vietnam movies. But, but like <laughs> I said, like it, it, it got criticized. Like, oh, we're seeing another Vietnam movie. In this yeah. case, we're seeing another pratfall slapstick comedy. Sure. So that a lot of people look down upon. It for that reason as well oh, okay um and also like blake edwards who directed like the pink panther like that came out first right so they're comparing it to pink panther which everyone knows everyone you know remembers the pink panther for yeah. the most part and a shot in the dark is actually the sequel so yeah that's right um yeah so uh but anyways like i'm not choosing the next episode zach is i am yeah and uh do you have anything in mind anything I do. you want to tease us with? I, I, I do i do have something yeah it's gonna be the sequel to serbian film directed by me um, <laughs> a canadian film is it <laughs> it's just it's just the same movie i've just remade it in the snow <laughs> <laughs> And on a high note, man. And on a high note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, Stanza. Good night. I'm done. <laughs> Good night. Dro- drop the mic. <laughs> yeah. So, um, something about maple syrup. Okay, we're going. Yeah. You don't start with the little one. No. Okay. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no teases with, for your movie? Uh,. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know for sure if I'm picking it, but you know, there might be a dog in there. Mm. You know, it might be a pet movie. A dog's purpose. Might be, yes. You got <laughs> it. Marley and me. Mar- uh, wow. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's heavy, man. Yeah, it is. Uh, Sad movie. It but, is. Yeah. But yeah, no, it might involve a dog. You know, right. maybe not quite in the way you've seen before. But, Does Owen uh, Wilson say wow in Marley and me? Probably. Let's find Google. out. Google. Google. <laughs> Stay tuned. We're going to watch Marley and Me throughout the rest of this episode. Just <laughs> yeah. so sync it up at the uh, 1 minute and 30 second mark and we'll, we'll keep going. Wow. 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 This episode's wow. about to end. So on that note, uh, thank you for listening. And uh, like I said, you can find us on all the social media platforms that I mentioned in the beginning of the episode. I'm not going to repeat it. You didn't pay attention, so you fail. Um <laughs> <laughs> So I'm at no thank you again and until next time. Wow. <laughs>